quiet, integrated with the neighborhood, um, serene. Uh, those are a few of my favorite words. And then the words I would describe this house are the words I would describe what we seek in all of our projects. And there are four terms that we really use to guide all of our work and they're regionalism, functionalism, uh, expressionism, and minimalism. And those are the sort of the main tenets of all of our projects. And I, one of the things I love about uh, these clients and this project is that it really, uh, it, it has all of those four ingredients um, in the finished product. And, and uh, I think those are the ingredients that make any architecture really much better for any place. I, I do like it when people are surprised and they say, gosh, I never liked modern architecture, but I really like this. And that's one of my favorite comments. We hear that a lot. And I think it's because we use a lot of natural materials and people understand it can be clean and simple and minimal, but it can still be very comfortable, very livable, and frankly, very functional. This is a great client because they came in with what I think were very modest goals in a way. They didn't need to add on more square footage. They loved the house. They loved the neighborhood. They loved their neighbors. They just wanted a house that was more um, suited to the way they live and they entertain a lot and they have two very active sons who are just becoming uh, adolescents and teenagers. So the house needed to be able to hold up to that sort of use and activity. Uh, of having all these folks over in and out of the house a lot. They wanted uh, an outside space that would really live well with the main house itself. Um, and otherwise they didn't give a lot of direction about aesthetics or design because I think they were really, they came to us knowing that that's what we were experts in and they just wanted us to help kind of reinvent their house for them. Um, and just kind of give them the same functionality or more functionality than they had had previously. So for me, the, the greatest measure of success is are the clients happy? And uh, these clients have just been a dream to work with and uh, they seem to really enjoy the house and it really seems to work well for their lifestyle. And to me, that's key. Otherwise, like I pointed out a little while ago, the, the main things I'm interested in in all of our projects are to bring in those four main uh, ideals, which is bringing in regionalism, which is some reference in the architecture that lets you know this is Austin, Texas. It's not um, Nanjing, China, and it's not Budapest. It's Austin, Texas, and I think that's very important. Uh, we think functionalism is key. Every design decision that you make has to have a, a good functional reason for being. <clears throat> Expressionism, I think, is also key. I think if everybody just lived in a, in a rectangular box and that's it, uh, our world would be uh, very boring and not nearly as rich as it could be. And then uh, minimalism is another thing that, that uh, I think is important in reducing the clutter in our lives and letting these other wonderful aspects of regionalism, functionalism, and expressionism be seen. So uh, those are the main four objectives I have, but the key is, are the clients happy and does it work for them? Sure, I'd love to, because that's actually one of the, the regional tones going on in the house. Um, we had to do very durable materials in general. So what we picked for the floors and for the baseboards are uh, a local Texas limestone. It's actually quarried not very far from Austin. And we even looked at having the stone cut to a, a, a thickness that would force it to go all the way to Mexico and be all the way, brought all the way back to be installed. And we said, forget it, let's go with the stone that we can cut locally just to reduce carbon emissions. Um, so it's a local Texas limestone. It's from near Austin. Most of the wood that you see um, is pecan, uh, pretty much, yeah, almost all the wood you see is pecan. Again, that's a Texas material, it's a Texas choice. I think it's very undervalued, it's one of the most beautiful woods. <clears throat> it's harder than oak, um, which a lot of people don't know of. So we really love the idea of reintroducing people to our own local materiality. On the outside of the house, we have local limestone again, uh, and then for the soffits where the uh, where the underneath the, the roof overhangs, we have cypress. Again, it's a wood from the southeast region in the U.S. Um, there 
we want to have a rot resistant wood outside and instead of cedar and redwood which come up come from the pacific northwest we always look towards more regional sources and cypress is great that way pecan is a one of our best kept secrets and unfortunately now well fortunately everybody's discovering it which i think is great it's a beautiful wood it's really hard and durable um and yeah it's just and it's still fairly plentiful and it's nearby <laughs> that's a great question uh the challenges of austin being a green city or the challenges of being green in general the both of, because actually there is a challenge to both austin is one of the most sustainable cities in the country and and i think the good news is it means everybody here is very aware of sustainability and green and even in uh, projects where clients aren't necessarily looking for that, our community has been really great at supporting sustainable efforts, whether people are seeking it or not. Um, and so that's been really great. There's a lot of knowledge in Austin that I think is very valuable that a lot of communities in the country don't have yet. Um, what's challenging about Austin being green, if that, I don't think that was exactly the question, but I'll answer that one too is that it thinks it knows a lot already. And unfortunately, even though Austin is uh, remarkably advanced uh, in sustainability and design in the country, it still lags behind other places where I think they've really made a lot more advances in te higher technology, higher, uh, higher levels of awareness about building science. Um, and Austin's starting to get into that, and we're really very focused on our focused on it ourselves to where we're really trying to advance that in our own projects. But as good as Austin is and as proud of our own kudos that we've earned in the city, we still feel like we're all lagging and we, need, we still need to do a lot of work to get caught up with places like Germany, Denmark, um, where they're really making amazing strides uh, and, and we need to get, you know, do more to get to that level. I think the key to the success of this project was the great team we had uh, led by our clients. I think that no matter how great an architect is or how great a contractor is, you can't do anything unless you have great clients who really are, are trusting, clear about what they do and don't want or need. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, trusting and really rely on your expertise. And, um, and then in some cases willing to try something new. And these clients were all of those things and it just become, not only were they great clients, but it become great friends. And I think that's, that's a lesson I've learned before, but I'm always surprised to learn it again and again with, the, with those experiences.